Did you know that dysfunctional and narcissistic family systems are governed by a set of unspoken rules, no different than a cult system? Well, guess what? Family scapegoats are also supposed to live by a set of rules within their dysfunctional or narcissistic family. And via my research on what I named family scapegoating abuse or FSA, I've identified 10 rules that family scapegoats are supposed to live by, even though no one ever says them out loud. That's what I'll be talking about in this episode of Beyond Family Scapegoating Abuse. So stick around. So one of the things we know as family systems therapists is that dysfunctional family systems are, are governed by three concepts. And those concepts are boundaries, rules, and roles. And this is where, of course, you've heard of scapegoat role, golden child, caretaker. Uh, and all this, this originated within the field of family systems uh, family systems theory and research going back to over 50 years ago. So I do like to educate people who come to my channel about family systems theory because if, for some people, it really gives them such a different perspective, uh, a way of understanding what happened to them in their family. It can be very healing. Uh, I'm going to read the 10 rules that uh, became very apparent during the course of my research on what I named family scapegoating abuse or FSA. And after I read each rule, um, I'd like you to just take a minute and think about if this has happened to you or is happening to you. Maybe make a note of it, uh, come back to it and reflect on it some more. And each one of these rules I'll be addressing in future videos so if you haven't yet subscribed and tap the notification bell so you know when I do release a video, you might want to do so uh, if you're interested in, in hearing me flesh these out. So here's the first rule. You must not contest or challenge the power holding family members view of reality or and especially their view of you no matter how false, distorted, or damaging. So right here, you're seeing some similarity to a cult system where you have a cult leader and everyone needs to go along with that cult leader's world, the world that they made. Because what the power, power holder in a system cannot control or understand it will feel threatened and it will then eject or reject that which it is feeling threatened by. Let's go on to the second rule. You as the family scapegoat or uh, identified patient, as we say in family systems, uh, depending on the situation, you must earn the right to be loved by your parents and other family members. You, you must overcome this, this distorted view that you're defective. But what I bet most of you have found out is it's not possible. It doesn't matter what you do, how much you comply, adapt, go along, even take on that role openly. Oh, it is me. Some people end up thinking it really, it, they are the problem in the family. They've been told that since they were little um, in many cases. Uh, and it's like, uh, a donkey walking after a, a carrot on a stick to keep it going, you're never going to get that carrot, that love. You know that no child should have to earn love from their family. Rule three, you must submit and defer to the family power holders and their view of reality and events. So if those of you who are learning about complex trauma and you've heard about the trauma response of fawning, uh, the other word we use for that in the trauma field is submit, the fawn submit response. Well, that was your way of surviving. That was your way again of adapting and just trying to survive and get through your childhood. 
when you're in that, that scapegoat role. The, the view of reality and events when you're involved might often include that you are the cause of issues, problems, uh, difficulties, the families encountering. And uh, sadly, children will usually believe when they're very young what they're told. Rule number four, you must not contest the unjust and at times irrational behaviors directed towards you within your family system, no matter how harmful or abusive. And believe me, I'll be doing more than one video on injustice and what I call righteous rage. And I was talking to a client earlier today um, righteous rage can get mixed up with toxic shame and injustice, and, and it becomes like a huge rock that makes it difficult for you to get over when you're trying to recover from family scapegoating abuse. So I'll be talking about this a lot more. This next rule, rule number five, comes from the fact that my research suggests that there's a high percentage of um, scapegoated children and adult children who are actually the family empath. So this rule number five, as the scapegoated family empath, you must carry the unrecognized intergenerational trauma for your family along with associated toxic shame, the unconscious grief. Um, you're the holder of the difficult feelings for the family. The problem is when you are exhibiting um, if you're like a vase that's containing all this and you don't even know all this has been deposited into you, you may actually have a lot of strong feeling expression and then your family can see you as unstable, emotionally distraught or histrionic or feeling too much, you know, you're disturbing people with your feelings. Um, and what no one realizes is you may be carrying generations of of feelings that have been suppressed and submerged. Uh, and that is a heavy, heavy weight on you. And uh, unless you find your way to someone who really understands this, you may carry that weight your entire life. And, and no child and, and no adult should have to carry that burden. This, this burden really belongs to the entire family but it ends up on the family empath. Rule number six, you must not complain when you're treated differently than other members of your family, especially in regard to the preferential treatment enjoyed by any golden child siblings. And I imagine, I don't have to say too much about that. Most people are pretty savvy and they probably have been involved uh, in a lot of narcissistic abuse discussions. And this, the thing that I'd like to add here is this is the split that happens in these narcissistic and dysfunctional families. It, it, think of the family psyche, the family as a psyche, it's a split psyche. And there's often these extremes of good and bad, black and white. Um, and so there'll be a quote unquote bad child and a good child. And it's all coming from the systemic splitting or the, the intrapsychic splitting actually of the um, parent. Let's get to rule number seven. You must not share your truth because your truth gravely threatens the narrative governing your family system, and it may be highly inconvenient to those in your family who are scapegoating you. This includes your contesting any false stories or beliefs about you promoted by individual family members. And I'll say this, if you do try to confront or contest a false belief about you, a false narrative, a smear campaign you found out about, something said to your face like, you're crazy, um, you could become the victim then of DARVO. DARVO is an acronym for Deny, Attack, Reverse, Victim, and Offender. And that uh, is um, through Dr. Jennifer Freyd's work. 
Um, she's done some really powerful work that I have included in my book, Rejected, Shamed, and Blamed. Um, she understands uh, betrayal trauma, family betrayal. And th this being denied and, and, and being told you're the offender, that you're the abuser, and the person abusing you as a victim is enough to make your spin, head spin. See, I can't even say it. <laughs> head spin. My head was spinning while I was trying to say it. And if you've, if, if, if you've experienced Darvo, um, you know how shocking it is. Rule number eight. You must stuff down your feelings at all times, especially if your feelings are perceived as being negative in the family power holder's eyes. And this is particularly true in narcissistic families that are, are tightly controlled where um, there might be a highly narcissistic parent or both parents where appearances are everything. And a great example of this is from an old movie, uh, but one well worth seeing, which is Ordinary People. It was an Oscar winner. Uh, Robert Redford directed that. And Mary Tyler Moore, uh, believe it or not, Mary Tyler Moore was absolutely phenomenal as a covert narcissistic mother. Maybe, maybe really just flat out overt, actually. Tell me what you think in the comments. Hmm. Rule number nine, you must deny painful events and painful realities, particularly those that are too difficult or upsetting for the rest of your family to face. This includes never going outside the family system for help. So that mirrors uh, some rules preceding it. And this is a little different than uh, you must never tell your truth. This this goes further. You must not only not tell your truth, you must deny um, that anything is uh, painful is happening to you in the family, that uh, painful re realities exist in the family, and you'll you'll find you'll get shut down pretty quick if you you bring up the fact. Oh, you know, I I found out through ancestry we had all kinds of trauma in our family history, and you may get some blank stares and people change the subject pretty quickly. And rule 10, last but not least, and, and I may have mentioned earlier, there's, I'm sure, far more than just 10 rules, but these are the first 10 I came up with from my research. You must tolerate poor treatment and abuse within your family to remain connected to them. I'm going to say that one again. You must tolerate poor treatment and abuse within your family to remain connected to them. Well, really, you don't need to tolerate poor treatment and abuse from anyone. And if that's what's required for you to remain connected to your family, um, that is something very serious. And I hope that you're finding help and support so that you can reconsider if that is something that's going to serve you and serve you in regard to your own mental and emotional health. So again, I'm going to be talking in detail on all 10 of these rules. And I would love to hear from you in the comments. Like this video if you found it helpful. Tell other people about it. And if you have questions you want to answer, topics you want me to cover, please also include those in the comments below. And do check out the pin posts. I'll, I'll try to put in a couple of articles for you that I've written that will add on to today's conversation. I'll see you next time.